As a nation, we're still many deep breaths into a paper bag away from recovering from this election. But the good news is we don't have to recover alone. So I hit the streets, sort of, to find out what's next. It's the day after the election and things are unclear. So in an effort to be in community with my fellow Americans, I turned myself into a robot. Hi. To talk about these projections. What the hell? Even though I currently feel like this. Do you mind just cradling me for a moment? Uh. <laughs> and sure, the election is important, but it's not the only thing that matters. Life must and will go on, which is why a few days ago, I took to the streets of this little ghost town. Spooky. To talk with Biden voters, Trump voters, and this guy. I didn't vote for either of them. What? I'd rather vote for somebody third party. Third party voter? Why? I liked Buttigieg a lot because he would listen to both sides and I would have voted for him if he had gone up against Trump. I don't want to speak for anyone else right now, but I will in this case speak for Pete Buttigieg. He did not want you to vote third party. No, not at all. <laughs> Never trust a man in cargo shorts. <laughs> Never. Ugh. Anyway, I wanted to talk to people about the future. Do, 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 going for a walk, doodly do. Ooh, mind if I sit beside you? Please. This is Chase Strangio, the deputy director for transgender justice at the ACLU. He, like many, is not thrilled by the 220 federal judges, including three Supreme Court justices. Nope, wrong Amy. Yeah, that's the one that Trump has appointed. How long are we going to be feeling the effects of the way that they have packed the courts with consent? conservative justices. Our lifetime, you know, our kids' lifetime. Yes. It's not like we can predict every outcome, but we have already started to see the extent to which this has really eroded our already very tenuous relationship to basic protection. Right. I mean, you know, Amy Coney Barrett might not overturn Obergefell, like, right away. She'll probably start with Roe. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. What that means, though, is that we have to really destabilize our assumptions about the ways in which our institutions are working. Oh, I know all about de Destabilization. <laughs> oh no! Oh, what's happening? And we've already started destabilizing our assumptions. We are protesting, voting, bloop, 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 bloop. and act blueing in ways we never did before. Have you been politically active for the last 40 years since 2016? Yes, I've been getting much more involved in trying to find out how I can be better about helping with criminal justice reform. I wouldn't call myself like an activist, but I donate to causes that I care about and I always vote and I always encourage others to vote. I was trying to volunteer a lot more with like immigrants to help their English. I actually mentor younger robots. You really? Do. Oh, sure. Like iPhones or alarm clocks even. <laughs> the occasional Roomba. Roomba. Those are the forgotten robots. Thank you. But my Roomba mentoring pales in comparison to the work of the people who brought us the BLM protests, who elected AOC and actually a lot of progressive Democrats. You know, young people like these BLM activists and these immigration activists from Staten Island. So tell me about your post-election plans. Just like kick back and relax for a while, just have a little chill fest. We wish that we could just relax and enjoy the time with our family. However, both parties have a lot of work to do, yes. especially when it comes to our immigrant community. My husband is undocumented, so people try to dehumanize him all the time, and I just want people to see that we're all human, and we all deserve human rights. Yes, there's work to be done. How do you keep people energized? As a black woman, as a member of the LGBTQ community, it is my responsibility to fight for the rights of not only myself, but, you know, the people coming after me. Is there time to rest? Can we have a minute. I don't think that we should ever really become complacent. Yeah. You can have one minute. One full minute? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Speaking of counting, I ran into State Senator Zelnor Myrie, the person responsible for authoring the bill that made early voting possible in New York. Can I come a little closer? Yeah, I promise closer. you, I've been COVID tested. <laughs> Ugh, could Zelnor please be the future of the Democratic Party? Are you going to primary Chuck Schumer? Would you like to make that <laughs> announcement on this show? Absolutely. I love it when people make announcements on my show. Absolutely not. <laughs> Can you just give us some words to keep us going, to keep us in the fight, to keep our chins up? Samantha, 
in this past election, we saw a record amount of people come out to vote. In the middle of a pandemic, people still dug deep and came out and exercised their constitutional right. We are ready to come into our democracy and say, this is ours. Yes, And so yes. know that no matter how hard it gets, we're gonna keep pushing. I love it. You did make me feel better. Awesome. Suddenly I feel taller. That is that confidence, that democracy, building you up, Sam. Midterms are only 734 days away. <laughs> Exciting. Okay, elbow five. <laughs> There we go. All right, America, we've got a lot to do. And while I'm still holding on to the hope that Biden will help my heart to go on. I know no matter what, I'm going to have to roll up my sleeves and get to work. But first, maybe I'll just treat myself to a little brewski. Excuse me, can you help me with this? Yeah, sure. Thank you. You're welcome, anytime. If you liked this video, hit subscribe and leave a pleasant comment below. Let's ride out the rest of this nightmare year together, okay? Okay? All right.